1 times 10 to the fifth, that's about an atmosphere. 1.49, that's about one and a half atmospheres. So let's see if that makes sense. We go up here. We've got a lot of speed. What happens is we out coming out here is the area opens up and the speed goes down. Speed goes down, that means the kinetic energy density went down. So that energy had to go somewhere else. It can be stored in it can be stored in pressure or gravitational potential energy or kinetic energy density. Well, if this went down, if the speed went down, the kinetic energy density went down, the pressure must have gone up because the horizontal, the height doesn't change at all. So I must have higher pressure, and I find out I've got, I do indeed have higher pressure. So it works. I love that. It's going to be a good day. Let's do another example. We'll do it with English units. Let's try, um, let's see, maybe a constant area duct. I like a constant area duct. Because if the area doesn't change, then the velocity can't, as long as you've got the pipe full of water. Constant area duct. So now we'll leave something else the same. Get rid of all this. Hmm. So let's um Let's go downhill with a piping system much like what we saw upstairs in the enormous fusion facilities uh, water system. We've got a constant area pipe and it goes down. And let's say it goes uh, down uh, 100 feet. You know what's going to happen if you have more water on top of you. The pressure goes up. You swim in a pool before, gone out of the bottom, hurts your ears, right? Pressure's increasing. So what should be happening, before we even look at it, if it's a constant area duct, I shouldn't be changing my velocity, so that kinetic energy density term shouldn't change. But I'm going to go down. I'll have water here. I'm going to go downhill, so I'll be gaining pressure. It's got to come from somewhere. It's coming from that height. It's coming from the gravitational potential energy density. So let's see what we've got here. I'll say I've got, um, I'll say I've got one atmosphere here. So let's say P1, P1, P1 is 14.7 pounds per square inch. And we should do that in pounds per square foot. So I'll say, let's see, there's, there are 12 inches per foot, so I'll square that. 12 times 12 is 144 square inches per square foot, and that's going to be That's going to be 2017. And that's, uh, let's see, inches squared cancel. So I did it right. I got pounds per square foot. And let's say uh, I've got a height. Let's see. And this is H1. This is set one. This is two. I'll have a measure of pressure down there. And uh, H1 is 100 feet. But I set it up so H2 down here, it's zero feet. And I want to know, I want to know what's the pressure down there. And I'll just put this in here. The weight density of water is 62.4 pounds per cubic foot. So this is the whole setup. So get a look at this. You can pause it and write it down if you want. And now I'll write up Bernoulli's equation. This is the English version. I'm going to say P1 plus weight density times height, 1, plus 1 half weight density over gravity times velocity of 1 squared equals P2 plus weight density times height, 2, plus 1 half the weight density over gravity times velocity 2 squared. Now, it's a constant area duct. If the area doesn't change, the velocity can't. So I'm stuck with that. These guys don't change. Kinetic energy density won't change. It's all a battle between pressure 
and gravitational potential energy. But, but I got something else, that second height, it's zero. H2 equals zero. It's just H1. Uh, I've already got my problem. So P2 is all by itself. That's what I wanted. So I'll write it out here. Second pressure is equal to the first pressure plus the weight density of gravity, uh, weight density of water, excuse me, times height 1, which is 2,117 pounds per square foot. That's uh, sea level pressure. Plus 62.4 pounds per cubic foot times 100 feet of height. One of the feet cancel, I got pounds per square foot now. So this is uh, 62, 6240, 80, 83, 57, about 8360. Check my math. About 8,360 pounds per square foot. So what I wound up doing is I lost gravitational potential energy. I went down 100 feet, 100 feet, but I gained quite a bit of pressure. That's what it was converted to, um, equivalent of about almost three atmospheres worth of pressure. And as it turns out, about every 34 feet worth of depth in fresh water gives you an extra atmosphere of pressure. So that's, um, I think that's a pretty good amount of fluid energy for you.